Hello and welcome back to the Future of Photography. I'm Chris um, and the whole crew is here. Imar, Adrian and Jeremiah. Good uh, day to you. Good day. Hello. Happy holidays. Day. Happy holidays. Oh, I forgot this to book This is a holiday show. Come on, Chris. You can do I forgot to book holiday. my hat on. I think we, we, did, we agreed to put hats uh-huh. on and then... No, this is not, not going to work. You, 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 you. Ian Drury, uh, in the immortal words of Ian Drury and the Blockheads, Re- reasons to be cheerful. Reasons to be cheerful. <laughs> Four or one. five great songs that was. <laughs> Which is yeah. another pop cultural reference that I'm not getting. Is that an album? Mm-hmm. Oh, very specific. The what late seventies mm-hmm. English? Yeah, yes. So they yeah. they were a kind of kind of a punk band. Uh, the very famous Ooh. song that they had, apart from reasons to be cheerful, was called "Hit Me with Your Rhythm." Hit me with your rhythm. Oh, that Hit one I know. Yes, <laughs> that one I, yeah. I remember. Yes, I do. Their album was quite unusual and great. And he was like a little bit, right? Yeah. They, they, <laughs> little they, bit they, was, yes, little I think it was their attitude that was more punky than the music, wasn't it? It didn't sound quite right when I said punk because it's not really punk music. Pop. But, it's really pop. Yeah, I suppose, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, just bet- that. Post-punk. Post-punk. Oh, it. yeah, that'll do. Post-punk. Thank you. <laughs> Everything is post-punk. <laughs> okay, by the way, if, if you see me looking to the left of uh, the screen here or to my left... That's because I'm still trying to figure out the audio levels of everyone because Jeremiah uh, has this wonderful, wonderful um, property of being about five decibels louder if it's not the sound check, if it's the actual show. It's amazing. (laughs) I just get so excited. Yes, I I can tell. I can tell. Okay. Um, Last episode, we had our headshots episode and we have... I think we've announced that this one would be about something else, and nice. um, it comes mm-hmm. it comes from the same uh, suggestions that I think Adrian you made um, that we would mm-hmm. do night shots for this one. Yes, with, more with our devices, with our magical boxes here. Yes, here indeed, go. more more photography. So so well, okay. So where I live right now, it's it's been raining and really low cloud for a week. There's about five hours of daylight. Uh, and it's just the middle of winter. And I guess many of our listeners in the Northern Hemisphere will be experiencing something similar, although Jeremiah, judging by the amount of light in his shot today, yeah. seems to be the exception. <laughs> okay. So I thought, what better time that, to go out and start working with the technology that we have, you know, future of, future of photography technology in our phones, and let's try some night mode. And this isn't at all to do because I've just got a new phone and I'm still playing with it. Nothing to do with that at all. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Move on. <laughs> so uh, I, I think... By, we... by the way, may I just interrupt and say, of we do get night here too. Uh, yeah. yeah, not. Yeah, it's, it's all right. We'll yeah. let you off, Jeremiah, because because we do make you get up fairly early in the we morning do. to do these we recordings, do. don't we? Yeah. Fair, is it? <laughs> so uh, I, I think we have a bit of a skewed repre- representation of phone brands on this show. So um, I think we're all on iPhones, and yeah. yep. uh, I guess we're also probably all on the fairly latest uh, iOS fourteen something just to yes yes we should we should probably acknowledge at this point yeah uh, the the apple is definitely uh the fast follower of night modes and uh they android were not the first that, definitely. they were not the no, first no, not the first no they the android had night mode i think uh a, a while with the, especially the google pixel phones i think yes. didn't it yes so we went out with our phones and did night charts for about two weeks now, um, not mm-hmm. regularly, but we had about two weeks of time mm-hmm. to do that. And um, so I think before we dive into the photos, just a question from me. Um, how, let's say, how intuitive was it? Because I did, I never really read up on the night mode feature. It just happened to be there uh, at one time, it just appeared uh, after an update. And... On iOS, I think it's there, there's no way to really kind of switch it to night mode. It does that automatically. So it, yeah, at one point it just happened. I have a, mm. I have a little beef with night mode. Okay. Um, mm. It would be good, and maybe it exists within the OS that I haven't yet discovered. But um, when you're shooting night mode, you have two. Um, you basically have a, a simple choice as you compose. One, you let the phone run, which in many ways can turn night into day or yeah. a version of day. Yeah. 
Um, there's no way of setting it other than going in and really doing some heavy editing that recreates that sense of night. Um, I know in my own photo when I when I, I I really had to choose one that didn't look like a simulation of kind of elevated exposure that mm. illuminated the sky, which in Night City could be actually quite bright from reflected light mm. and amplify that artificially. Um, I like dark photos. In fact, later you'll see one of my picks this week is about the power of night, the power of black, the power mm. of darkness. And I think that uh, one of the things that I love about the iPhone night mode, it's uh, sensitivity to the smallest bit of reflected light and its uh, AI ability to amplify it. But I want control over it. I would mm. certainly like to be able to adjust all manner of how it interpolates that. I think it's prob probably totally possible to a, to a certain yeah. extent it's possible with other software, but not with a built-in one. Because this is really, so, so, in, in true mm -hmm. Apple fashion, they just take the they just take take over and, and decide for you. Mm. They, they do, don't they? I thought at first I was going to have a total failure in the brief for this set of photos because, uh, you know, what my idea was, well, you know, a lot of us have got Christmas lights up around town and it'd be great to use night mode to take shots of Christmas lights. And I tried and I couldn't get night mode to switch on because it was too bright. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that's that was really annoying. Uh, mm. And so uh, you'll see as we come when we come to my photos that you know, I haven't quite got the the traditional Christmas lights mm. photos. But but so, so that 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 is a, a little bit uh, of an annoyance. And um, Jeremiah, just one thing for you though, you know the um, the standard iPhone camera way of you know, point um, tapping on something to to focus and expose, and then you can drag to change the exposure. Mm. That mm. does yeah. work for me in night mode yeah me too and i was able to mm. get the exposure to be reduced even in night mm. mode yes. by by that normal interface method well how do you do that um before you shoot because obviously when you pu push the shutter button you know it goes to how many seconds it feels it requires to bring up a, an exposure mm. so at what point would you do it? And if I hold the camera up, I'm not getting a very true sense of what the final image is going to be. So adjusting the brightness would be a hit or miss. Is that really what you're saying? Just mm -hmm. keep it down and click the shutter and hope for the best? There's, uh, the, the, there's a bit of that, I think. So, I mean, I was just using it the mm -hmm. way I normally would. Uh, other, uh, you know, your mileage may vary and listeners may know better, but uh, I, I was yeah. just, you know, tapping on, on the, and, and dragging to get to, That's to get exactly an exposure what I was to where doing, I wanted Adrian. it to be. And yeah. it came out roughly in the right place. Mm. Did you do it before you shot or after you shot one and said, oh, that's too bright, I think. I'll okay, I just, uh, I just did a little did a I test. I did, that's the way... I did a test under my I dark desk right now the... while you were talking and it gives you a preview with a boosted ISO. So it gives you a preview of what it thinks the shot will come out as. And then oh, okay. you press it and then it, it does its little count up to two, three seconds, whatever it takes. Yeah. And, that's, uh, and that then builds mm. to that same brightness level. That's what I just figured out. So, okay, so we have I taken night shots. And by the way, I have tried mm. everything to destroy mine. So you'll see that in the photos. Um, <laughs> That's interesting. I've left mine at, uh, straight out of camera because this for me was part of technical experiment as well. Yeah, for me, it's, for me, it was it was it was finding out how far it can go. Um, so let's just look at them. And by the way, we have all uh, done multiple this time. So it's, uh, it's we're gonna we're gonna go over the photos a bit quicker than last time otherwise this yeah, it's episode Christmas. will Everybody's be got some time off Chris <laughs> <laughs> um, here we go first shot by Imar right yeah yeah this is just uh, the way home one of the streets in my town um, like uh, Jeremiah said actually um, to the other shots that you have I was trying to illustrate exactly what Jeremiah was talking about in that I found, and Adrian too, I found that the Christmas lights were a bit too bright and night mode wouldn't really turn on. So I took it to that really dark spot that you'll see a couple of pictures on and expected to get, um, you know, a kind of a, a nice night picture. And what I got was something that kind of turned the sky 
a really weird dusky colour and it was pitch black with this tiny strip of light left in the sky. So I, I, I'm I, not sure if I like it, but in the same way, I use that um, sort of uh, tap on the screen and pull it down to bring them to the level that suited me best. Yeah. What's so not to we, like about yeah, beautiful reflections? Yeah, this one's reflections. edited afterwards. Hmm? Yeah, I kind of, I, I push them up a little bit. The contrast is probably pushed up a bit. I don't know if it's too much, but um, it does nice things to the reflections. Actually, wet streets are, I'm, I'm getting, I thought that was a nice, um, I have another yeah. couple, but I, I, I put so many in, I said I better stop. <laughs> when we make films, Imar, we spend big money making wet streets. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Get the fire hose. Shiny tiles. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Yeah. Um, yeah, very, very so nice. I like I like this one a lot, and the, the colours in the streets you know, and the reflections are fantastic as well. I mean, you have you have this blue mm. blue teal teal orange kind of thing that's so, so popular in, in Hollywood movies, at least on film posters. Yeah, yeah. So, that wasn't really that wasn't really deliberate, actually. And you noticed I, I it afterwards, so maybe in, I'm actually. influenced. I think it's baked into the computation. Mm. You'll see one of mine in a bit. Think so? and, okay. And where mm. uh, where it was like that is not it's a good bit of editing like. on this afterwards as well. <laughs> So. Let's go to the next and see. Um, that's another one of yours, Imar. Oh, that's me again. Yeah, that was a really misty night. Um, the blue, I thought that that electric blue was particularly lovely. Um, so I was trying to keep the kind of misty look of it. And um, that feels more like yeah. night. Feels that like really night. feels like night. Yeah, yeah. Have now, you edited I did, these at all? Oh yeah, they're they're all edited. Yeah, um, there's using? probably a bit of a vignette on that just to bring the the, the the very top of the sky there right down. What did you use? Black black, um, Snapseed. Your go to. Um, that's really my go to. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think there's anything else on that one. Um, there's a vintage filter on it. You know the Snapseed vintage mm. filter with the vignette at the end. I do remember that. And that sort of gives it the blue. I wonder how that would look if you added the glow filter Cast. from Snapseed. Mm. That could be very mm. magical. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, our lights are particularly nice in town this year. So. But same, same overall theme, pretty much. You probably took those in, in rapid succession. Same didn't overall. You? you know what? Uh, going to work different days. Ah, okay. Different weather conditions. A, Obviously, it wasn't quite as wet this that's day. That's time of year. But thing, it was isn't it? You go to work very in the foggy. Dark, come home in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. So, I, like, that's <sighs> a bit about what life revolves around at the moment. So, yep. I haven't been anywhere else. All right. Let's see. You're not see really allowed to travel. The next one. This is another coming home from work shot. That's a beautiful shot. <laughs> I love um, this one. That's, this is um, one I of the kind is... of oldest churches in town and it was the glow from the window that caught my eye because yeah. y you don't often see a light on inside and um, it's it's not used an awful lot so um yeah just caught my attention do you know the work of Todd uh, Hedo I do not um no worth I don't think I do -D -O, worth exploring H -I -D -O. He, he basically okay. he photographs night um practically lit suburban houses rain oh, misty okay. absolutely gorgeous he's yeah, a, a san lovely. francisco photographer extraordinary uh talent and okay. this is just this is i mean this, these are not this my shot, natural thing to want to, to it's it, it's it's the street light the, the patch beautiful. of light on the ground the light in the window it's, it's uh, mm, the faint silhouettes beautiful. and and the color the color is um yeah, it's it, magic not not teal orange more Painting. like greenish orange I like this. Uh, yeah, yeah. Me too. I wasn't overly happy with the the blueness, but I couldn't get it exactly the way I wanted it. Oh, so I just it's, own it. Own it's it. The <laughs> way it's supposed to be. <laughs> it's the way it's it wasn't, supposed to be. Oh, you yeah. really worked yeah. hard at achieving that. Sometimes you that just kind have to um, tinge of color. <laughs> settle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, Next fine. up is this one, Jeremiah. This is yours, right? Ooh. Yes, it is. Uh, not as aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> is it a puddle? No, it is. It is, in fact, a puddle. Uh, it is, in fact, night. The um, the very, very top is a white fence. Again, getting a little bit of glow from the uh, street lights. Again, mm -hmm. I was trying, uh, A, to experiment with just how much light would be reflected in the puddle. I mean, you could almost say, is this day or night? But... 
Um, mm. I wanted to feel like uh, Spotty Night. But and, it is uh, it is daytime it in the it. puddle. It reflects a bright sky. Yeah, the puddle it? is lovely. It's just it mm. picked up that contrast and oh. ran with it. Ah, oh, interesting. There's not a lot of light in the so, sky. So, so is that at a all. Co is that a computational artifact then? It is. Uh, interesting. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Mm. And I, you know, I could knock it down, uh, but I chose not to. I just wanted to see what comes out of the camera. You know, it, it has. Um, I don't think I, I had much editing outside of um, turning it black and white. Did you intend to leave that fencing in there in the, the background? Because it's black and white. Um, for some reason, I have a, I, I don't know if I, I may have just posted <laughs> the wrong one. I, I have two and the other one has more uh, frame. Mm. It's a slightly wider picture so that there is a, um, a ring of black right around it. Um, in my haste this morning, I see. Um, I posted the first attempt at this. The second one has a little more pleasing framing, so that there's a kind of a connection between that fence and. The uh, I see. Now, I still like. I still like this. Has it just on a, a on the note of um, a wider frame? Is it just a little technical thing? Has anybody noticed that night mode on the super wide lens results in quite mushy images and, and not as sharp as the other two? I, I haven't. Think that's true of I haven't all used of them, it on yeah. that, but I think it's a different sensor in there. It is, and I've tried. I've, I've experimented with that, and I think you can't get all the benefits of your iPhone using wide. I mean, you get wide, <laughs> yeah. but you, mm -hmm. you 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 don't get all the benefits of it. So, um, Imar, One you the, you had a remark. I was talking over you earlier. Oh, I, I just thought it could be oil also, just because it's black and white, you can't like, oh. I mean, if you knew there nothing is, about this yeah, and you were looking at it, it's, it kind of has a strange, like gaping face or something. I don't know. You could make so much out of it. It's very interesting. <laughs> just a gloomy, the moody is lovely shot as well. of uh, current mm. conditions in America. I like that it doesn't, yeah, <laughs> I, I like that it doesn't show everything so you can, you can you can start the engine up there and uh, interpret there stuff into that. Next one. Oh, this is one of mine. So, okay. So this That's is uh, th this is what I this is the one I was referring to a few minutes ago when I said uh, yeah that I think the teal and orange thing is maybe baked into the computation. Um, so uh, yeah, this this is a photo in, in two halves. There's the sky half, which has some billowing steam in it, which is nice, uh, and then there's the the car park uh, at the bottom half, uh, which is which is by the way lit by very orangey sodium light. So, um, it, so. It, you do get an, an orange light as a result of that. Um, but this this is uh, this is straight out the camera. It it's do you know what I have to say? This stuff is is amazing technology. So these things where you're hand holding for three seconds, uh, and you get a, a sharp image. Even with something moves, it seems to have a way of picking one frame and and making that still. And and mm. you know so it's it's really quite really quite impressive. Um, I, a couple of artifacts in it. You might see, so so there's a crane halfway up, and you might see that there's some mm. little green artifacts just above mm -hmm. the crane. Those seem to be lens flares. So yep. th this is the the middle lens. The uh, what do they call it? The wide, but it's the middle of the three, and it's about a twenty six mil equivalent, I think. It's, it's Roughly, a standard yes. phone. It's yes. your standard phone lens, mm. basically. And I have found that it, uh, it is a little bit prone to lens flares, uh, especially when you're doing more computational stuff. I mean, you so have a very that, bright, a couple of very bright light sources in there that point straight at yes, you. So yes, yeah. um, mm -hmm. it's almost, almost to be expected by most lenses to do some it, sort of It flaring. is, although it is something I have, uh, having recently gotten a new phone, it is something I've definitely noticed that mm, this particular okay. lens is more prone to than I'm used to. Um, so, but it's it's just a, just a thought. But you know, if you think about this, if this is rendering steam really nicely at night. Mm. Right? So, like, my my mm. first my first uh, association when I opened that photo was uh, nighttime. Something's burning, fire brigade That's kind of I thing. Because yeah. it was yeah. like smoky yeah. and fiery in color, mm. and then the the crane kind mm. of reminds of the of the ladder of a of a fire truck or something. 
So that so was the, <laughs> the boom. No. So George, yeah. the, the, the reality yeah. of this is I took my kids swimming. And this is the car park behind the swimming pool. <laughs> of course. So what you're seeing there in the sky is is steam that's coming from the boilers that heat the swimming pool. Uh-huh. Um, there, ha- there does happen to be some sodium lights in the car park. There does happen to be a construction mm. site next door, which is why there's a, a construction <clears throat> crane there. Um, but it is, it, it, it's, um, yes, it's interesting that you pick up the whole fiery thing. I hadn't thought yeah. about that. Maybe because <laughs> I associate that place so, so strongly with water. Of course. <laughs> so it, it's, by the way. Me, it, 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 go ahead, go Jeremiah. Ahead. Um, for me, it feels like, uh, approaching a film set for a night shoot, yes. uh, <laughs> around four in the afternoon with a <laughs> one hour pre-light. <laughs> where they're just organizing the lights and uh, I've got a full night of work ahead of me and so, I'm shooting it through my car car window. <laughs> That's what it looks like. By the way, one mm-hmm. one thought that I that I have when seeing sodium lights is that um, uh, looking back through old photos, uh, night photos, sodium lights is kind of the norm, but um, more and more of those get replaced by white LEDs now. And the, the, yeah, the, the, there, there won't yeah. be that many photos left with uh, like sodium light. There's magnesium uh, lamps that have green, greenish light. So uh, cityscapes with orange patches and green patches, things will be a thing of the past, mm. not too far in the future. Do you know what? That... They're very hard to really mm. eliminate effectively oh, yeah. uh, in post-production. Very difficult. The wavelengths are so... So harsh, yes. Complicated. So spiked, yeah. I guess, aren't they? They. Yeah. So Has peaked. anybody tried uh, night mode in RAW? Yes, uh, I have. Uh, I just so. today, because I mean... only got the new operating system. Today. Oh, in the Pro RAW, in the new one, which in only Pro works RAW, yeah. in the 12 Max and 12 Pro, Pro Max, I think. <laughs> so I cannot use it. It does, yeah. yes. So, so, Je- so uh, Jeremiah, have you tried it? Yeah. It's it's uh, extremely impressive. I have to say, for for a phone photograph, I'm getting images that are about 17 or 18 megapixel file sizes. Um, I will bring. I haven't brought any into all the editing I've done. I've done on the phone. I'm about to bring it in and and just give it a, raw, uh, a sort of a. Um, a deal on Lightroom and see if if Camera Raw will recognize it. Yeah, or you may, you may not get it. it yet. I think I think what uh, Lightroom is doing is it's recognizing it as just a flat DNG file and it's pulling one frame out of it. I, I think there needs to be an update. I, I think I've seen that on the internet somewhere. Oh, Could are they right. working on an update? Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's there's about to be a, a, an update both for the um, silicon yeah. and uh, so, an update for so, the new OS. Yeah. So, what? One last thing. So, I have tried. I've tried taking the same shots um, just this morning um, in night mode uh, in the the normal uh, high efficiency uh, file sizes, file type, and the Pro RAW file type. Uh, I'd say there's about two or three things I saw immediately. I need to do more work on it. But the first thing is is that the the original image that that is processed uh, and you see on your screen. Uh, looks to be almost identical in terms of things like noise levels and, and patterns. Um, I wonder if there's a there's a JPEG baked in there somewhere that that and that's what it's rendering because they are very similar. Um, but if you try to edit it, uh, you need to use the Apple Photos app because it's the only one that can get at all the yeah. data at the moment. There is a huge amount more latitude in the Pro RAW file than there is in the Hike file. Uh, and uh, you you can do that. I, all I did was try maxing out sliders like shadows, highlights, exposure. Exposure being a, a slider in iOS photos that has never worked ever. <laughs> um, and now it does, um, it, or at least it, 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 it almost does. Um, uh, and I, then, so I thought, I'll have a look and see just how much more data there is here. So I had a quick look. Um, the the night mode high high efficiency files come out somewhere between 800 kilobytes and 1.9 megabytes. So that was the range I had from half a dozen shots. Mm-hmm. So really very small. Um, and then it is a high efficiency you know, f- file format. So it is very, JPEGs, I guess, would be slightly bigger. The Pro RAWs, anywhere between 20 and 34 megabytes. <laughs> so 
<laughs> That's but why we need these big memories, big memory anybody phones. Anybody buying a new mm. phone to get to use Pro Raw, you don't, don't buy the base level model. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Well, you know, this. do you think that these are going to uh, significantly change photojournalism? When, you mean when more you more than so more than the existing uh, smartphones? Yes, and I, I'm saying this for broadcast purposes, uh, obviously for mm -hmm. news, etc. As as we kind of move into the video, since we're talking about the future of photography, when this kind of pro pro res becomes a video uh, process, you know, in whatever they call it, when the processing power of your phone. Um, and it's equivalent in audio, which may start to come. In other words, a, a microphone that you can literally point. Um, it these would be are really interesting, have... wouldn't it? Because they have this high, this Dolby high vision or whatever it's called now in the phones, don't they? I haven't really tried the video yet, so I need to get on to trying the video. Anyway, you know, I do here... think that... that there's Go on, Chris, room. keep us going. Keep us on track. <laughs> yeah, come on. Push him on, Chris. Push him, Chris. <laughs> That's my job. Change the subject. That's my job. Moving Where's my forward. Whip? Where's my whip? Okay. Um, Imar, your photo. Ow! <laughs> See, this is the far side of the church from the other picture with the light on the street. Mm, okay. <clears throat> um, on a different day, I deliberately went to this place because it was so dark, because the streets are such are so bright. Now, the orange on the tree there, um, there was light behind me, um, street light, but it was far enough away that it's in my field of vision. It wasn't really bothering me, but obviously the phone was able to pick that up. So this the was this was pitch dark where there. you shot this photo. That was pitch dark. That's yeah, yeah, pitch dark, <laughs> except for that little band of of red over there in the kind of. And um, it wasn't it wasn't late afternoon in the sky. Uh, in the sky. No, it was like five thirty, so it was black. Wow, it was wow. dark. That's, that's a yeah. that's a lot of that's a lot of gain, then, isn't it? It's a lot of amplification. Isn't it? That was about that was about three seconds, and I, I didn't that's a, like as it, long so as it goes. It's three seconds. Took another, yeah. Wow. So the next one. Well, let's see if, if that the okay. The, the, the next oh, one. No, they are they're out of okay. order. They are they are randomly sorted. They're but, out of order. Uh, we'll get to mm -hmm. the next one. So. But um. So I took it again using Adrian's method of tapping the screen and pulling down the, the brightness to, to get it to the way I thought it should look. Now, I may have overdone it a little bit, but even to take that and edit it back to dark didn't make any sense to me. It just it's horrible. I don't like anything about it. That Cause looks it's so, like because it's so fake afternoon. Yeah, but and we don't so know this. So for us, it yeah. is a late afternoon photo. It's a it's a, it's a, it's a yeah. kind mm. of a sunset like photo. Looks perfectly mm. fine. But it, you know, I think it looks really weird that the tree, the color on that tree just looks it so It does look like it's being strange. bathed in orange light. <laughs> and green, uh, you know, it's really green at the top. It, it's strange. Mm. This looks so alien looking to me. And look at the top of the tree, actually. Hmm. That's so bright. That that wouldn't even make sense at that time of the day, would it? Yeah. I don't I think, think it I would. Think you're, I think you're right. There's, there's definitely a case mm. here of... Um, computation but maybe not artificial intelligence it's not <laughs> isn't it weird though it's like, artificial it but not intelligent it didn't sort of yeah, lighten yeah. the bit over by the wall or try to keep any of the detail there which is the bit where i would have really wanted to keep mm. the bit of detail i wonder if, um, if in lightroom or something like that you can lift the shadows and crush mm, the highlights and how that would feel mm, mm, at the end mm. of the day actually it might be worth taking it in and, and trying just to do that with play. it and just see, see the latitude but um i had no patience so i just took another probably one. best <laughs> get it right in camera eh? yes yeah that's the rule in it mm. very good thinking so <laughs> next one is another one from uh jeremiah yeah. right that's fabulous whatever it is <laughs> what is it <laughs> okay um, is it the power button on your knee? No, but, <laughs> but it could be. This is taken literally in the middle of the night uh, in, in my bedroom. There's no light uh, at all. I mean, it is, it is pitch black. And what this is, is uh, it's the top of a, a molecule air filter. 
that runs that has a very, very dim uh -huh. glow. And behind it, it's quite close to curtains, thick white, white curtains oh, that are okay. maybe a few inches in back so that you're seeing a reflection of the light um, on the curtains that are not as focused, obviously, as the um, molecule, which was focused by the LIDAR. Oh, and uh, I just, okay. so it was a little mm. bit of an experiment just to see how it would pick up. Basically, I couldn't see with my eyes this glow. <laughs> uh, you could barely make it out. But I thought, wow, that's, uh, that's something. Is, <laughs> I yeah. don't know what. That's... But I also liked the abstraction of it, the kind of spaceship. It's gorgeous. Of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just wonder what happens. Really what happens if you turn it upside down? Does it look like it's well? I I have, but I off? thought I would. Hmm. Actually, I, I I did it on its side, so it looked like a streaking spaceship. Through, <laughs> you know, through, I put a star field in back there, and yes. you're in business. But I I, I actually <laughs> wanted to present it as shot rather than transform mm. the um, mm. the visual here. I think okay. it's I think it's some you know, exploratory art for the Neutron movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, definitely well a success. Huh. Mm. Yeah, like it. It's a, it's, it's it's something something real made into something abstract, just mm. by yeah. The I think the impressive thing for me is the reflection of the light off the curtain. Yeah. Oh, that's gorgeous. Yeah. That so that sure. really was. Mm. It it could pick that up, but I mm. could not see that really. Yeah, that's quite amazing that you can see stuff that you can't. Okay, here's okay. one that I took, um, <clears throat> uh, and it's a it's a it's a wind turbine uh, at night. So the the one thing I noticed oh. is that oh. well, first of all, I love the clouds. I it's the first time I've taken a night shot with stars in the sky because it was always overcast before, um, and it. The blades turn and then there's a red light on it because it's high enough for like air, air traffic uh, to be dangerous for air traffic. So they have to have these lights on there, and the and the blades get lit by those li by the light with every third revolution. Something goes red up there. Uh. So I was trying to time the I was trying to time the photo and um, and the clouds uh. were nice and I've, I crushed it a bit in post. It was brighter. When it came out of the camera, and I cropped in, mm. so it's, it's horribly artifacted in terms of like noise and noise reduction and so on. Some of that is my doing, some of that is the camera's doing, but it is cropped in quite a bit. So, um, See, very I, cool. I, I I wonder if you threw this into, you know, uh, Topaz, uh, you know, what do you call it? JPEG to RAW or whatever. They're, they're sharpening tools as well. Maybe. I only, if you could recover that or would it be mushy, muddy? I, I didn't even want to recover it. I kind of like this painterly quality uh, of it. Yeah. And it's it's mm. all made oh, with the uh, Photos app. The it's just no, no third-party app yeah. or anything involved here. Mm -mm. Oh. Yes, yeah. No third-party app was injured in the creation exactly. of this photo. <laughs> I tell you what, though, just on an, I am I am really I like looking forward to seeing what those third party apps can do with the Pro Raw file format. Oh yeah, um, mm. you know, because that that's all Apple has opened that up as a yeah for people to develop with. Uh, I've heard, um, and that that's going to be some quite impressive stuff mm. coming along now. I think. Yeah, I'm fascinated to see how big I can blow up um, a shot. I mean, even even you know, seventeen twenty three sharp would be nice. Um, off the phone. Mm. So I've been printing a lot actually uh, recently, just just six by fours. And uh, do you know what? It's it's really the the new phones are really they, they can work really well to generate something printable. Um, it's you know it's just a, a little you know selfie die sub printer. It's not the best printer in the world. It's not fine art paper or anything like that. Uh, but you get some really nice quality prints out of something you shoot on your phone and print six by four, and that is, yeah, that is blowing it up, isn't it? But I guess it's uh, you know three it's bigger than a phone screen. Three years ago, uh, Monica and I we took my parents to a little vacation in Tuscany, and it was a very very special time. And we, um, but we didn't. I mean, we brought the big 
cameras, but we didn't really, really use them. So we ended up doing mostly iPhone shots. Again, 2017, three years ago, whichever that phone was. Uh, not sure. But um, <laughs> but my parents are getting a photo book from that thing for Christmas. And mm -hmm. um, I scrambled for photos because I didn't have any like high quality photos. But it turns out that those iPhone photos were really, really good. And uh, putting those in a oh. book, having them printed, mm. is like, okay, who cares about the camera? They're so... Mm. First of all, it, they look really good. And second of all, there's such important memories, the memories in there yeah. that, um, that, really, <laughs> yeah. that really doesn't matter whatsoever yeah. for this kind of mm -hmm. uh, usage. So anyway, next photo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Ah, it's this, really yours, I think, Chris. Yes, That's this cool, is yeah. titled Autobahn because it is, uh, and it, <laughs> <clears throat> so 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 we we've all those photos come from our night walks because well night walks like in the evening but it's dark already so it's pitch black in the sky, um, and uh, camera didn't want to trigger night mode so I tried different things and one was I held my hand in front of the phone before I pressed the shutter button or while I pressed the shutter button and then quickly mm -hmm. took it away. And the phone was focused, oh. obviously, to, to the wrong spot, but it did a long exposure. Mm -hmm. um, so oh. th what, you're, what you're looking at is possibly half a second of my hand and two and a half seconds of, uh, of, this, <laughs> of the street, of the road. I'm assuming you're crossing a bridge. It is on top <laughs> of a bridge. No. flyover. I hung it under a drone. No, of course I was on a, on a bridge over, uh -huh. over the Autobahn. And, um, that was to look mm -hmm. down, and uh, I was I, I had the the vice grip of death because I didn't want to drop the phone down because <laughs> that's, yeah. you don't do that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, mm -hmm. then and then in and then I went in in post and just played with like the saturation and and a few other things. But so I I destroyed the photo. But by the way, in terms of in terms of dropping a phone, something that was all over the internet this week was the guy was taking pictures. Oh my God, uh, from, I saw that. Yeah, from a plane. <laughs> yeah. And it blew out of yeah. his hand and went mm. down to a beach. I think it was in... Uh, it was an iPhone 6. In Uruguay or something. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And he was like, like all of these images of him in the in the plane you know just shaking his head he's a professional photographer. <laughs> they went down. He got in his car. He did find my phone. He found the phone wow. <laughs> on the beach and, you know, it was fine. There was just a little crack in the screen, but it was scratch. fine. It was yeah, perfect. But, it, yeah. but it wasn't shooting so. video at the time, so he, doesn't, he didn't have a video of the descent. No, he, he did. did. It captured, it oh, captured the whole oh, thing. Oh, the phone wow. captured the whole thing in the video. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah it, was, it was quite good. Was cool. Though I think it would have a different <laughs> result on the Autobahn. Something tells me. Yeah, it sounds like it landed on sand, did it? If it landed on the beach, nice, nice sort of It would probably <laughs> smash through someone's windshield and kill them or something. Um, yeah. Next one. Here's your darker one, Imar. Uh, That's my dark okay. one, yeah. Yeah. So, like, in my, that would be the way I'd naturally take, want to take it, and then I'd go in if I wanted to try and pull out a tiny little bit of, it's very dark, I know. But um, if I had a tiny little bit more detail in the, but I still like, I like the sky in it yeah. better than the other one. And it still looks, it still looks bright, even though it was dark. But um, I mean, the ground was pitch black, like the sky was dark as well. So Well, I'm with you, Ema. I prefer this version of that shot, definitely. Mm. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not against letting things, you know, fall away to, to black or, or to, to lose detail. Details oh. overrated yeah yeah it's just I, I like a path so i like when you can see the flow that, you know you can see the that's direction true but because path. you have a wall coming in um that, yeah, that provides kinda, you with a line kind of gives and, you yeah and you can see the turrets as well so. i'm imagining the path because you're, you're like a a, a high mm. tree sort of hedge on one side and a and a wall on the other very strong mm -hmm. you know, feature wall mm -hmm. on the other side i'm imagining there's a path mm. down there so. mm -hmm. it's good so yeah, I definitely prefer that one. Just I just wanted to show the the um that was just for contrast on the other one really. Um I suppose I should have done half and half and made it one shot, but I didn't get it. <laughs> oh you time, could you sorry. could just blend the two <laughs> put them on different layers and then blend the one part yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That might work well actually. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I might try that. 
Are there are there apps on the phone? Yeah. Wow, did that do that? Ivan, <laughs> the, to blend you mean stuff. Like, Oh well, uh, sure. on yeah, the yeah, iPhone, yeah. on the iPad, on the iPad, you could have Affinity Photo and that kind of stuff. But no, there there are special yeah. layer. Yeah. Yeah, often in the iPhone, on the what? phones, you have to have a, a sort of layer blending app or or exactly yeah, that's where what somebody I'm is developed. Yeah. yeah, there are there there are a few definitely. I've, I I think there's one called Blender. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, Blender. Uh, yeah, do you know what I don't actually? I must get one. Uh, and um, the, yeah, often mm-hmm. they're often if you search on things like double exposure or something okay. like that. Not not to be confused. Mm-hmm. Not to be confused with Blender, the three D app on your oh yeah desktop. No. No. <laughs> and and you can do it in Snapseed as well, by the way, because there's a, there's a double exposure mm. mode in Snapseed, so mm. okay. that'll give you, and then you can mask it out. I see. Okay. Oh, this one's one of mine. Yes. Mm. This one is That's one of mine. This, these are actually so. So this this shot is actually of Christmas lights. Um, uh, That's it's, a weird it's just, Christmas just light color. Sort of, yeah, yeah, they're just not the si- the sort the of lights that hang gorgeous. across the street <laughs> where you go buy your presents. So mm. yeah, this is uh, a light show that they have every year at uh, a place called uh, the Royal Horticultural Society Gardens at Wisley, which is you know, half an hour up the road, and, and we go most years. Uh, so what we're seeing here is is uh, you know, trees uh, and and all sorts of other garden type things lit up from below by coloured lights, and they have moving light shows and things like that. In the foreground, there is a very still pool, uh, and uh, it's not the most still pool, but it is. It, I, I saw that evening, but yeah. You know, so what you've got is is some some level of reflection or symmetry. Uh, through the middle of the shot and you know this was handheld three seconds you know, uh, uh, and uh, and is proof that if you have a uh, you know the, the computational power and you're pointing your camera at something interesting you can make really great photos I'd love to say there was skill in this mm. but <laughs> mm. I like but it because because it's because it's because it's not it's not the usual kind of color contrast it's unusual it's surprising for trees mm. that kind of a color the red in the background is a great contrast mm. to the to the blue in the foreground. It's or very Alice turquoise. in Wonderland, it, isn't it? It's an amazing place. You, you walk around mm. this. I mean, the, the gardens are huge, you know. Um, uh, but the and, and everywhere they have these amazing light shows at this time of year. It's fantastic. I've got loads of these photos, but I just put one of this type in for for the podcast. Even though it took several years for cameras for digital cameras to kind of get along better with the with the very bright colored LEDs that we have today. It's it used to be tungsten lights with a with a gel on 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 them and that was easier for cameras to handle and now with the LEDs and their very pure colors sometimes uh, cameras struggled for a while to to get the color right. Yeah, I th- the I don't know what the lighting technology is here. I don't know if it's LED. I would expect or LED. Something. Looks like LED. Yeah, it could be, could be. But some of the distances they were throwing light were quite a long way, and that's what makes me question it because I'm not sure that you know uh, the the LEDs would throw light that far. But no, but, but you know, for the trees, there's 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 not enough warm components in there because you always have those with the tungsten lights. Uh, Okay. Uh, anyway, just just loved this, and it was a great shot. Yeah, I guess I guess the, the as I say, there was no no technical skill in it. It was a, it was a shot that I saw and aimed to capture. So <laughs> so there was some compositional effort involved. But uh, this is all the phone, and this is also straight out of camera. So you know, amazing stuff. Yeah, the reflections. Really where lovely. do where do you think the next level is going to end up at in terms of you know the iPhone 15 or 18. <laughs> like, where, what's the next? If you were at Apple in the camera division, uh, where would you push the technology to go? That's interesting, Chris. Well, that's I, a good one. I for give. Chris. I give. No, 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 no. I, there won't be an iPhone 15. I think we have two more generations of iPhone, <laughs> and then it will be replaced by something new. That's my. Robots. That's my prediction. Oh, wow. No, no. We'll have. We'll have things that. Do like lidar everywhere and and virtual virtual three D geometry and stuff and uh, so the f- I, I said this years ago we will enter an age of uh, fo- photographic archaeology we'll just capture a lot and then dig out the photos from there or recreate yes. them mm-hmm. from there 
so so, so i'm yeah. i'm looking forward to some some of the 3d stuff you know uh yeah. seeing where that goes not not because i i like virtual reality because i think i've said enough times on this podcast that i don't but the but the the lidar um the the lidar that they built into the phone uh, and i've been playing with it and scanning some stuff and it's it's very much a first gen if if at all <laughs> 0.5 gen uh, capability uh it, it but it is interesting uh and if they can get that to work like you know some dedicated you know handheld lidar scanners that you know that that, that exist today but are much bigger and more expensive and a dedicated kit I think that could be really good. I, you know, I, I've been playing with, you know, t- taking a 3D scan of a room in the house and putting a little portrait of one of our family in it and, and just seeing what happens, you know. And, um, it could be fun. It could be fun. And the fact that you can, with the LiDAR, you can export um, 3D models. You can, you can iMessage 3D models to people. Uh, I, I can't remember what file format is. I think it's a dot. Oh, never mind. Jer- Jeremiah, you know more about this th- 3D stuff okay, than let's, I do. Okay, let, let's try to come back from that rabbit hole. We'll do this in another episode in a lot of more detail. <laughs> yes, there's so many photos to go through. This is another one of yours, Adrian. It is. This is this is my last one. I think I only had three in the mix. So uh, this, is, this is a shot that I took uh, uh, when I tried to take photos of the Christmas lights in my town. Um, and found that the Christmas lights were too bright and I couldn't get the night mode to work. So I went somewhere a little bit darker. So this is a, 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 a this is the older part of our town, which is quite old. Um, uh, and uh, so this is a sort of Dick. De- Dickensian street shot, if you like, 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 like rows of little brick cottages with a big church tower in the background. And again, this is all straight out of camera. And I think the I think what's happening here is is that the color colors here are the phone's computational work um, amplifying the color as well as the luminosity. Uh, because the you know it didn't look as blue and white as uh, blue blue and yellow as this when I took the shot. I'm just looking at that blue light at, on top of the church, which mm-hmm. looks like a here Batman signal searchlight kind of thing. <laughs> I think it's supposed to be a star, but it, that was a, a very star. blue okay. white in the mod. In, that was a very blue white in the modern LED style of blue uh, whiteness. I see. Yeah, Ugh. and and of course the street lights are not that. So, um, well, you have three different uh, light colors. You have an, a yellow light source, a whitish light source, and a bluish light source there. <clears throat> Yes, yes, and 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 that's I think that's what gives rise to the colours in the shot rather rather than anything else. But yeah, it's um, the brickwork came up really lovely, didn't it? I mean, that looks really nice. It is. It's colour. It's it's really good. It has has su- uh, suffered a little bit. Some of these, when you look at the high res versions of these, mm. they suffer a little bit from the over sharpening that I talked about before, and Ema, mm. you've talked about before. Good news though, Ema, my initial pro raw tests don't have that mm-hmm. over sharpening in them okay so well they wouldn't they wouldn't they would just be you telling me i'm gonna have to get a new phone then <laughs> no no i'm just just teasing you a little <laughs> <laughs> it's also impressive the shadow detail is good here too it really did lift mm-hmm. i mean you can even feel a little shadow detail in the distance i'm finding um, the files are a little bit brittle though there's not a lot of movement in these night mode files which is why again i really want to try the 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 raw versions and and go out and try that more i've only taken about six shots in the house you know uh in night mode so far uh it but yeah i, I want to go out and do all of this stuff again and do shoot it all in pro raw and see just how much latitude you get from that because mm. i think it's going to be i think it's going to be really impressive and not just for a phone impressive actually just genuinely really impressive for any device do a little a b comparison for us here's your here's your homework for one of the next episodes (laughs) (laughs) okay will do (laughs) okay is that the moon Uh, that's the moon shining on the greenhouse roof now that is a great night shot i think that's just it's night. a night night shot, it's just right? Nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I ran out the back. Night, I, like, I had of the to moon run out the back garden because I could see the moon, and uh, yeah, the light was just falling so nicely on the on the glass, and it was cold and kind of frosty, so it it had a kind of um, it was misty on the glass. 
So is that um, how it came out of the camera, or did you pu pull the exposure I, down I, before I took the photo? I pulled the exposure down a tiny bit, yeah, because it wasn't, um, you know, the way w what you see with your eye is not never what you get. And yeah. I was trying to make it a little bit more like how it felt to my eye. So Are those and clouds I, there's probably a, I wanted the black to be really, really black. There's just a cloud under the moon there. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so. There's probably a good bit of cloud around, but um, yeah, I can never, I can never get stars to come out in my pictures. I can never get the moon to come out. That's in because pictures. you're in Ireland. Properly. It's just <laughs> always overcast. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, actually for a moon picture, I, I was pretty happy with that one because it, it always just. It's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's really, really. Uh, right. I never get it to come out right. Right. So, yeah, that's it. And here's my next wow. one, which is, okay, so one of the night walks and it was pretty dark, but then it was also foggy and the, the, the street lights were yeah, wow, throwing is... these, these triangular Shafts. volumetric yeah. lights there. And this yeah. is, this is a tiny crop. This is, I mean, there's no resolution there. It is really like a 10% of the photo. There was, I was too mm. far away from it, but that gave it this mm. painterly Thing and yeah, uh, it's good. yeah I, I was very very happy with that because the loss of detail the crane kind made, of frames it too I like mm. it. yeah the crane as well so it it really it really gives it this um yeah it's, it's a surreal kind of quality yeah yeah and i really i really like this lovely. i like the you know the, the mixtures of colors of lights i like the volumetric lights the street lights there i think are, are great um it remind it reminds me of a if not a, a particular artist, then a, maybe a, a sort of school of art. I don't know. It, it feels like a sort of 1950s. Uh, I don't know. I don't know the terminology of it, but that sort of that 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 phase of painting that came in that was after Art Deco and you know everything and, and, and all jagged lines and everything got a lot softer and a little bit. Well, I don't know who who studied art here. I I've never studied art. Me neither. <laughs> 50s American art is probably not my forte. Oh, well, never mind. Anyway, I think it looks, yeah. Uh, what, what uh, the, the most prominent shaft of light from a, uh, seems to be, seems to be shining on an old sort of, either an, uh, a sort of Model T Ford or some sort of cart. <laughs> so, uh, well, it is, <laughs> it is, it, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm looking at this. This is actually, actually do have horses there. So it could be a horse standing oh, out there, even though okay. the horses nice. would probably be in their stable at that time. But it is possible, literally possible that this is a horse because there's like four or five horses in that area uh, of the village. So it could nice. be, could be. I do. Uh, I, I feel there's, there's no more detail I in there. So I can't so really urban. tell. <laughs> After mm. watching all of your photos, I, I just feel so urban. Well, you are, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, yes. <laughs> so let's see. Yep, that was the last one. Yeah, we're done. So, um, yay. <laughs> so before we go. That was fun. I enjoyed that. A lot. That was good, I enjoyed yeah. that. And I I love seeing everybody's yeah you know, everybody's use of the the technology and uh, the the interpretation of the brief as such as it was our brief was very brief I guess wasn't it <laughs> <laughs> it was and uh, and while I set up the pictures of the week because that will take a second or two um, well how can we bridge the time hmm. Well, I don't know. I mean, you know, I guess we could talk about how people felt using this. I mean, I, I really enjoyed it. It it felt like a, a sort of, a, as well as a tech challenge, a, a little bit of creativity and experimentation. And, it was a good uh, experience. I, it was. And I was trying to, you know, and I, I feel like I've, I've sold myself a little bit short uh, coming here it, to do the show without having done any post-processing because what you guys have created is really really amazing um and mm -hmm. i feel like i could have done just a little bit more with with my photos i mean it was very intentional to have them straight out of the camera just to see what the technology could do but. Mm. well i feel the same way as you i like for me it was just a, i have not really explored night mode i think in uh i've done a few shots you know i did that flower shot that would be posted a few weeks ago but generally, I, I haven't. But what I have done is started to experiment with the 
with the iPhone on my daily walks without taking uh, another camera with me, like just pure and playing with different uh, third party and Apple phone processing afterwards. And there's a, a huge amount of discovery in front. Yeah. Um, it's exciting. Yeah, it is. It is exciting. It is exciting. You'll be using your phone for astrophotography next. It'd be crazy. Oh, <laughs> I, I had stars on mine. You so can. that was uh, yeah. that was a first exactly. for me. Exactly. Okay, Adrian, I, your pick of the week. This is your pick of the week. Yeah. Okay. So I got this. This is so. I don't, I don't know. I'm going to bash it because um yeah it's it, this this is this is something i bought this week uh and it's made of metal and it's engineered in a really nice way and it feels really really good it is it is something quite basic it is a it is a phone holder right so it is the sort of thing you know where you hold you spring open the teeth and it clamps your phone and um, i bought it because partly because of the night mode thing actually which is why it's my pick of the week this week uh, because I thought I'd better go out at some point and use a tripod and see if there's any difference between handheld night mode shots and the uh, uh, and the tripod mounted ones um, and I didn't really have anything my new phone is so big <laughs> It didn't fit any of the holders that I own, <laughs> so I had to buy a new one. <laughs> so this has got, uh, in about three or four places on this, made of metal, it's about three or four places, it's got quarter 20 threads, it's got a 3H thread, um, and uh, it's just, uh, and it's got a ball head as well, so you can adjust and the angle. And it's got an Arca Swiss mounted. compatible mount. It does have an Arca, uh, uh, yes, except well, the only tripod I own is a Manfrotto one. And of course, as, oh, as most people okay. will know, Manfrotto don't use Arca Swiss. So, um, yeah, it's just a, it's, it's a bit more expensive than your average uh, phone holder. Instead of being in the sort of you know, £10 range, this was just over 20 Although from the screenshot you're sharing there, Chris, it looks like it's gone up in the last few days. It says um, £24.99. Pounds, yeah, yeah, I think I paid about 22 for it or something like that. But it feels like something that could last for some years instead of something that might break in the next few weeks. So so that's my pick of the week. And I will go out and I will try doing some tripod based phone photography at night. Because why not? <laughs> why not? Oh, but by the way, I have I have modded my my Manfrotto tripod and put an Arca Swiss head on it just because that is way more way more usual. Uh, yes. Next one is by Jeremiah. Um, I, I just I chose this photographer to just bring to everybody's attention. Alex, uh, his work is Jody. It, he's an extraordinary photographer, extraordinarily talented photographer. Generally shoots in conflict zones. Uh, but I, I, I wanted to tie in the power of, of dark, the power of night, the power of black uh, in bringing out these things with little co contrast and maximum energy in, in very, very dark modes. I think that it, his work is unique. I haven't really seen anything like that. Um, and his style never overwhelms the subjects uh, of his spectacular imagery. It's uh, this is a powerful photographer. Mm -hmm. It feels when I was looking at this, it felt like you see you see a lot of yeah, uh, photos in the the world press photography, for example, of, of you know social unrest or disturbance of some one kind or another or conflict. And, it, uh, and most all of it is shot during the day. Um, this made me really got my brain thinking this set of images of like, well, actually, a lot of that activity must happen at night. And are we see if we get are we getting a secret insight into a, into a, a dark and shady world of you know, where, where the, the shots taken in daylight could only give you a thin sliver of what it's really like. So it was. Yeah, it made got, really got my brain working. These images, I, these may be shot in the light as well, but crushed down so that they're yeah. essential. Um, is there? They're very uh, reminiscent okay, of yeah. classic painting. And house. and this is the mm -hmm. kind of photo where I have no. issues with the way they are being presented. Because if you look at this on a on a regular web page, which which classically has a white background, um, I think it needs a darker environment to really strive in. So I if, I, if I open you. this I up, I so agree with yeah, you. If yeah, if I open this up, uh, uh, just just in a bigger, let me just make this 
browser bigger. No, and... you're absolutely right, Chris. So, yeah, so it, 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 yes. it, it just will feel very different if you present this without a bright white background. That was the biggest problem with Flickr for like 10 years because they never, uh, they never yeah. strived from their white background and it was uh, jarring in some it's, contexts. Yeah. It's still the biggest problem would, uh, with iOS photos. <laughs> True. <laughs> Unless you tap I on would them. I would imagine mm. that uh, the, these photos uh, printed, whether in a book form or, or on a wall in a dark uh, gallery, would be even much more powerful. Yep. Mm. So I agree mm. 100%. Anyway. But, but again, the power of darkness. Yeah. Mm. Imar. Yeah, I thought this would feed in lovely to some of the stuff we were talking about in the last few weeks. So it was it was actually a Twitter account that I found, which yeah. I couldn't figure out how to share. So they have it. This is their website, but it's the Twitter handle is we don't exist here. And it, they just pop these fake people up all the time. Yeah, yeah. we I think I think it's we talked strange, about this in, in one of the pre yeah. pre Emar and pre Jeremiah episodes. We talked about this okay. computational people thing. <laughs> And but it, it has it has improved, it's it has mad. become better and they are all well, Do you know what? artificially has, generated. Actually, that's, a re that's a really good point. You, you, mm. there's so yeah, you know, when we first talked about this a couple of years back, Chris, that yeah, you know, it was it was often quite easy to tell which ones because their eyes would be lopsided or something like <laughs> yeah, that. Still, something still weird right? artifacts. Look at mm. the weird thing coming in from the right. That is uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that looks broken. What is that? Mm -hmm. But, so uh, that that yeah. might still be the first iteration of that algorithm, but that algorithm has has improved dramatically, um, higher resolution, and yeah. yeah. She looks Did anybody really catch the story of uh, this Japanese artist making ultra real? Oh, we had it in last in the last episode. Face face masks. Oh, the masks. Oh, yeah, there was oh, this one no. guy. I, I think it came through my timeline <laughs> somehow with the the photo yes, with the guy and, 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 and his a... face in the hand. Yes. <laughs> yeah, very creepy. No, no, I, I think mm. I presented a black and white image of someone last week. Yeah, that yeah. doesn't exist. Mm. But these things are getting more and more frightening. So as this is our, I have a pick of the week, but uh, as this is our last episode before Christmas, um, and as we can see with Adrian and Imar uh, being in a very festive hat mood, um, <laughs> I want to I add a, a very festive little bell to it, which has the most beautiful Aww. sound ever. I've, uh, let me just, and it has this, like this lasting thing. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a Bhutanese, Every uh, time the bell rings. it's a close. Bhutanese <laughs> bell from Bhutan and, <laughs> But it, it's just this beautiful little sound. And I, I was on a market and I tried 12 different bells until this one <laughs> sounded just right. Some of the others mm. were just a bit more muffled. And this is my little festive Very sound nice. of the day. <laughs> so I think we are at the end of this episode. Uh, of course, you can find us on the Twitters, on the Instas, at Now, our little... Discord, our home, our discussion ground, our showcase ground, where we discuss with you and share pictures and just uh, do photography things um, is on the screen as well and in the description as well. And uh, all the other episodes, of course, are in, in the same place where you find all your other podcasts. So that was it for today. Until next time, everyone, take care. Yeah, happy holidays. Bye all. Happy Bye. Christmas. Merry Christmas.